March 19th, 1982, Randy Rhodes, phenomenal guitarist for Ozzy Osbourne, dies in a tragic plane crash in Florida. We're going to talk about behind the scenes of making this episode on Taking Off in this podcast. Okay, welcome to the podcast. I've got Christy via phone. I'm going to try this phone thing out on our podcaster, Christy. Are you there? Yeah, I. You know, it's funny. I'll never get used. I'll never get used to the uh, dramatic music. music. <laughs> yeah, and I wonder if I should have brought it yeah. in a little earlier. I almost forgot about it. Um, I, you know, next time you're at the office, if you want to go through my music library and pick something more appropriate, I'm all for that. You know, honestly, I think it's highly appropriate. It's just so dramatic. Like, I've never really been... We've been doing Taking Off now for what? Four years? Five years? Five now? Four, yeah. four and a half, four and a half, almost five years. And like, yeah. you know, it's always been kind of like upbeat and fun and airy. And now we're talking about really intense topics. And it's just... Usually you do the editing and stuff for our, like, crash videos. You do it after I've recorded it, but right. now I get so to actually hear, hear it, it as it's it. going. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now I get to hear it. <laughs> and for the crash accident videos on our channel on YouTube, um, I do use serious music and it's a lot different than the, in the hangar or the normal taking off flying video music that we do. Yeah. And, but you know, it's funny. I mean, I'll go back. I will watch the videos before you per, like post them. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of like, I do now, you know, just kind of screen them and make sure they look good and everything. But other than that, I don't like watching myself. <laughs> so right. that's why it, like the, the, the music, the dramatic music is kind of new for me. All right. So especially in a live setting. This is our, our new podcast. Um, we're, we're still a baby infant podcast, but uh, you know, when I first thought, you know, we can be pulling in all the we have over 200 episodes of in the hangar we can throw those out there um in addition you came in on the first day and uh you had a lot of backstory on your patsy klein that we were about to record and uh suggested we make that our first podcast i thought it was a great idea and it went over really well so now let's do the same yeah. thing i'm about to record my randy rhodes investigation video and just yeah i've learned so much about this and and i went into randy rhodes uh, you with patsy klein you'd at least knew who she was listened to her and everything else i had to look up who R randy rhodes was i i did not know because um i grew up in a very show oh, you didn't listen to ozzy osborne no no <laughs> i uh you know but i was grown up i mean and when he died i was 17. boy that just gave everybody my age i was 17. he died before i was born Oh, thanks. For I would that. just like to put that out there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, I was not allowed to listen to that stuff. And I wasn't one of the kind of kids who would um, sneak stuff in like that to listen to. Um, I actually grew up listening to the early stages of contemporary Christian music. So the early stages of Christian rock. So, you know, what I was listening to was groups like Petra and DeGarmo and Key and things like that. And my parents weren't thrilled when I was listening to uh, DeGarmo and Key and they really didn't like Res Band. Um, and Why was that too hardcore Christian? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> because this, again, this is the uh, early 80s, um, late 70s, stuff like that. That was just a little bit too hard. At that point, um, wow. At that point in churches, there were a few starting to allow like church music, worship music during the service to be done with something other than an organ, uh, be done with piano and guitar and everything else. But so I came into this. See, very this is all new information that I never knew that there was like hard Christian rock. I said that jokingly, but I'm learning now that that is a thing. Well, there was Christian metal and... Um, and there were Christian hard rock, <laughs> oh hard rock uh, hair bands in the 80s. Uh, Striper is somebody uh, actually. I know uh, what I'm doing for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <laughs> Going on YouTube. Yeah, go check out Striper. And it's S-T-R-Y-P-E-R. And uh, Oh, my God. See, it's the Y. That's what the parents disagreed with probably. Well, no, I think they disagreed with the spandex. The yellow and black spandex is what the parents were disagreeing with mm. um, for the Christian Gotcha. Bands. Okay. But uh it's uh, 
it it was a different world back then. Anyway, I didn't, you know, I maybe had heard of Black Sabbath. I maybe I don't even think I'd heard of Ozzy Osbourne, um, but Black Sabbath, you know, was definitely something that was taboo, and so I never even went there. So when we asked people to to comment on crash videos they wanted us to investigate, I got a ton of requests for Randy Rhodes, and I had to go and look. And by this time, yes, I know who Ozzy Osbourne is. By this time, I know who Sharon is somewhat. And, and, and my experience with Sharon Osbourne has been actually not through the reality show or through Ozzy Osbourne. It's actually through America's Got Talent. So as a family, we would watch that. And she was one of the guest hosts. And so I kind of knew she did a reality show. I knew she was married to Ozzy Osbourne. But I really grew to like Sharon from America's Got Talent. Did you watch that? That's basically how I know her. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's basically how I know her, too. I knew she was Ozzy Osbourne's wife. I knew of Ozzy Osbourne, you know, like, because, I mean, I wasn't, like, super into his music growing up, but I knew, like, you know, the Crazy Train song and a few others, and there's a whole, like, he ate a bat on stage incident. Right, right, right. So, yeah, there's, yeah, there's that. Um, but that's about it, as far as I knew of him. I had never heard of Randy Rhodes either. So when you... You said you were doing this. I was like, Randy Rhodes. Yeah. So. No idea. Yeah. And and, and in looking into it, I can see why people are very intrigued by this one. Let me uh, set the the stage a little bit. Um, When I was in college, I grew up loving music. I self-taught on guitar. I played violin. I played saxophone. Then I learned piano on my own. Um, I've learned all these different things. And in college, uh, just for the kicks, I started taking music theory, um, and that's a very hard degree, by the way. Um, I did not finish and get a degree in music theory, but I took like three or four semesters of it, and and it's it's really there is is more akin to mathematics than anything else. Um, so when I began to study Randy Rhodes, so Randy Rhodes' mother um, ran a music school, very classically trained. His father was into music, so it's, it's very natural that he just went that way. And, and you know, she would teach him piano as a child, and then he really fell in love with guitar as like a six- or seven-year-old. And so she encouraged that, and she actually got him an instructor. And oh, now, did you hear that? That's funny. Um, no. That's going to have to be something. I'm going to need to put my phone in airplane mode because I got a beep for a call Wait. in. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't hear anything. Okay. So don't know if that came through on the podcast. So everybody, sorry about that. So Randy got an instructor in guitar that his his mom lined up for him. And after training, I don't know, maybe a year or something, the instructor came back to the mom and said, I'm done. And she's like, what do you mean? He has surpassed me. I can't teach him anything new now. And Oh, gosh. So he was phenomenal. And and as I, again, as I researched this, I'd never, ever had seen, I, I'd, I'd heard Crazy Train, yeah. Uh, I had never even pulled up a YouTube video. So I pulled up YouTube videos and just started watching this. And the thing that really s- stuck out to me is looking at these early tours of Ozzy Osbourne's solo career after he left Black Sabbath. And to some degree, he got kicked out of Black Sabbath because of his drinking and drug uh, problems were just really becoming too hard to deal with. And but he went out on his own. His his the manager was Sharon's dad, by the way, and then Sharon kind of took over. And she was Sharon Arden and Ozzy was married to somebody else. And Ozzy uh I started watching these videos and looking at the talent on the stage, watching a, a YouTube video on Crazy Train, Randy Rhodes is phenomenal. As somebody who's had a little bit of music theory and everything else, is it's not just, you know, as as, a, as the older people in my church would cover their ears and say, that's just noise. No, he's, he's applying a lot of classical music theory to his electric metal guitar playing. And I could respect that and understand the talent that was involved in that. It was truly amazing. And, and I, I may get crucified for this statement, but looking at the videos of like Crazy Train, uh, in my opinion, Randy was the most talented guy on the stage. So and- I don't think you'll get crucified for that. I think that based on his history and his talent and everything, I mean, that's a, that, I think that's an accurate statement. 
So phenomenal. And, and um, you know, in doing this podcast, I just forgot how exactly how old he was at the time of his death. But I want to say he was like 25, 26 and mid 20s. Oh, and he, uh, some backstory before we get to the crash was they, when Ozzy went out on his own, he was going to call his band the Blizzard of Oz. He ended up recording the first album <laughs> with his new band called the Blizzard of Oz, and that's how they were going to brand themselves. And all of a sudden, the album comes out, and the album is called Blizzard of Oz by Ozzy Osbourne. And so the band, huh. I, the band was a little disgruntled, I believe, in that they were kind of uh, not part of the thing. This was Ozzy and and some players rather than the band Blizzard of Oz. Right. And, but they went through a tour of that first album, and uh, then they recorded the second album. And uh, at, by this point, um, I don't know exactly behind the scenes, and probably a lot of our listeners and watchers can explain this a lot better than me, but Sharon, who'd kind of taken over the management, uh, fired the drummer and the bass player. Um, all of a sudden, too, out huh. of the blue. And uh, there was there was a lot of bad blood there. And um, But it, what it did do is it enabled... Um, the new bass player was somebody who had played with Randy, and so it was one of Randy's buddies that came on, Rudy uh, Sarzo. And, the, you know, even though Randy and publicly was upset when Sharon fired the other two guys, um, at least I think maybe they hired Rudy, I don't know, uh, to help um, placate Randy to some degree, I don't know. But during this new tour and, the, and going across the United States, Randy had already told Ozzy that he was done when the tour was over. He wanted hmm. to go back to college and get a music degree. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there is, there's all sorts of press out here and all sorts of theories about all this stuff going on because one person – goes public with this information. Another person goes public with another piece of information. So it's really, really hard to know what's accurate and what really happened versus what didn't. But uh, according to one report, and again, this is incredibly hearsay, the the fired bassist or the drummer, I can't remember which one, uh, one of the fired band members said that the new band member told him that two weeks before the plane crash, at breakfast, Randy was telling Ozzy that he was going to go back to music, to college to get music degree, and Ozzy got mad and punched him in the face. Oh, my. Now, later, after the crash, Ozzy says nothing but great things about Randy and never mentions any kind of trouble well, or anything else. Of course. Who's going to say that they punched a dude right before he winds up dying? Well, and, you know what I mean? Well, and honestly, I don't know that Ozzy would remember it because his drug and alcohol problem was so bad that they were uh, yeah, drugs. they were canceling concerts because he couldn't make it. And Sharon Arden was having to sometimes unsuccessfully get him up on the stage for concerts. It was just well, nobody <laughs> eats a bat on stage when they're sober. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> right. I think you're right, and the the band members, Randy in particular, was getting frustrated by that, and that's one of the other reasons why he was going to be done at the end of the tour. Um, I think the band. I read that he told Ozzy, like he told Ozzy at one point, "Hey, you're going to kill yourself one of these days." It's reported by Ozzy that that was the last thing that Randy said to him the night on the bus before the accident. That's uh, the last cool thing. irony. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah. And then, okay. So then we get to the accident. What happened is they had a concert in Knoxville. They have a tour bus company, the Calhoun Brothers Tour Bus Company, and they have a driver, and his name is Randy Acock. And Acock is driving the bus. They leave Knoxville that night, drive through the night, and they uh, apparently. ACOC is having problems with the air conditioning on the bus. Now, the bus owner of the company uh, has a mansion in Leesburg, Florida, or near Leesburg, at a private air park. And Randy, or the ACOC uh, 
drives the bus and decides to park there to try to fix the air conditioning before they continue on to Orlando for a big concert. And so he pulls in. Some people have said he pulls in at 7 a.m. To me, the math doesn't work. It's a nine-hour drive at least, and that would have meant they left Knoxville at 10 p.m. the night before. And if you're eating bats on stage, I think you go much later <laughs> into the night to do that. Am, am I yeah, right? Yeah, you don't, you don't eat bats until at least 11. Right. So, so yeah, it, it, it's optimum bat eating kind of time frame. So I, don't, I, I <laughs> yeah. don't quite understand the clock here, but I don't know that it really matters because um, without any sleep or anything else, and Ozzy himself testified that he saw Acock snorting up Coke. So the guy well, was Well, you on, have to to stay up all night to drive the bus. Yeah. I mean. And the autopsy did confirm the, guy, the pilot, Acock, had Coke in his system. So that's not an right. indisputed fact. So you've got a guy who's hiked up on Coke, who's the bus driver, who says, hey, by the way, I've also got a pilot's license and, and there's planes here. And he takes a, a Bonanza, um, a VTEL Bonanza, and decides to go joyriding in it. And the This is not his airplane, is it? This is oh. just a random airplane? It, uh, it is not his airplane, and the owner will testify later that he did not even know about this. He did not get permission for this. And the airplane was not, it had not been flown in over a year. It was out of annual. Oh, my. But it, the keys were obviously accessible to it. They were able to jump in this airplane. Who comes up with these ideas anyway? Well, I think you have to be on cocaine um, to. Um, <laughs> True. So, yeah, but who, who, yeah, but I'm just wondering. Okay, I'm going to let you finish because I have questions. Continue. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, this, this story is just one really obvious chain in the link after chain after chain, link after link here. Um, as to, to this is just such a bad idea, and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And um, I guess in 1982, you know, big-time rock stars, everybody's drugged and everything, and you just do you, – you go along with it. You never say no. Um, to me, at some point, I'm like, hey, dude, you're on cocaine. I'm not even getting a bus. But the um, – I guess back then that was the, – part of their culture, I guess, was acceptance of all this – you're high, but you can drive. You're high, you can fly. I, it's like cocaine is just a stronger form of coffee, basically. Maybe, like, maybe and that's how they ju they justified it back then in their culture. I, I don't know because, again, this culture was is very foreign to me because I, I grew up sheltered from it. So I don't know. Right. But maybe, again, uh, commenters can, can tell us. Um, so – Acock jumps in the VTEL and he talks, um, uh, I forgot his name already. I should have it in front of me. Uh, but he talks one of the band members of going up, and so he did, and, and also the tour manager. And they went up and Acock did some low flybys of the bus parked outside the mansion, which was inside this air park. And he would do flybys buzzing the bus and the tour manager later said he was trying to wake the drummer who was in the bus. Of course, Ozzy was in the bus. Sharon why? was in the bus. They were all asleep. So he does this. I yeah, think. like why? But why? <laughs> so he tries to, to wake them up by buzzing them in the Bonanza directly over the tour bus. And he lands and they get out. And the makeup artist wants to go. Uh, Rachel wants to go on the plane. Well, by this point, Randy's awake, and he sees what's going on, and he's – all his friends say Randy was afraid of flying, but not, like, terrified of flying. He just didn't like it. Um, he'd still go flying. He's a nervous flyer. A nervous flyer. So it's not like he was terrified of flying, so you go, why in the world did he get on the plane? But he was just – he didn't like it. However, what he wanted to do was get some really cool pictures for his mother. And so, remember, again, he's mid-20s. It was very sweet. So, uh, Acock says, look, I'm not going to do anything crazy. Rachel, the makeup artist in her 40s, has a known heart problem. We're not going to do anything crazy. We'll just get some pictures for you. And so, Randy says, okay, since we're not going to do anything crazy, it'll be a nice little flight. Um, sure. And so, they get on. And this is where it gets really, really crazy. Um, apparently, Acock decides okay. to buzz the bus again. And here's where we get some 
uh, kind of this um, conflicting reports. Let me back up a little bit. Knoxville, the night before. Acock's wife or ex-wife, I can't, I can't find anything that officially says they were divorced. One news article talks about estranged wife. Another says divorced wife. Um, but Acock, it, it's clear, wanted to try to get reconciled with Wanda. Wanda was in Knoxville and wanted to go to Orlando. So hmm. a- Acock, his estranged wife, Wanda, comes to him and says, hey, can I get a ride? Acock, with I think Wanda standing there, tells, asks Sharon, hey, is it all right if we give her a ride? Sharon's uncomfortable, but it's like, you know, she'd be a total jerk to say no. So she uncomfortably allows Wanda to ride the bus. And so she, Wanda was on the bus. So here they are the next morning in Leesburg, and um, the guy, the, the band member that had flown on the plane and the flight right before, he was outside the bus taking pictures, and he was the closest eyewitness to everything, and he had a telephoto lens. He says Wanda stepped, uh, like opened the bus, and she was there. Another report says she was at the front of the house, so I'm not sure where she was, but the uh, band member with the telephoto lens camera taking pictures near the bus, the plane's coming right at them. And he says through the telephoto lens that he could see Randy struggling with Acock over the controls. To oh, the, my. To the point where the wing was like 60 degrees and six feet off the ground. Oh, my gosh. And it was coming right for the bus. He, all he could do was duck and dive or whatever, the wing hit the bus, spun into a pine tree, and exploded into the garage behind the bus instantly, killing all three. And I I had a lot of questions after this, and I did deep dive. I have questions. The problem (laughs) the problem here is that the NTSB report is not easily found and I have not been able to find the actual docket. Because the docket will have photos and everything. And I, the same thing. I, right. So in my world, you know, Keith Green um, died in a plane crash several months after this event in 1982. When I looked for the Keith Green docket, I couldn't find it either. It's like they've all been archived. I've applied to try to get it, and then I get, you know, crickets, nothing. I can't get it. So what I have found is, like, screen captures from the docket and stuff like that, and that's what I'm going off of for my evidence. And I finally found a really bad reproduction from the NTSB document of one picture from the band member with the telephoto lens. And it is oh my. it is very eerie. And I'm gonna show this on the video that we have in our YouTube channel. It almost looks like a hand drawing. The reproduction is so bad. It's a black and white reproduction. Um, so some people have thought, is this a hand drawing? Um, you can't tell who is even in the plane with this bad, bad photo. And that's why I would really like to find the docket. But all of this is uncooperated. All of this is, you know, the testimony based on this one guy. Rudy Sarzo later um, came out with, um, and he was asleep on the bus too. He he came out later with, he, he firmly believes that Acock saw his, estranged or ex-wife went crazy and said, I'm going to kill her. And so that's what, why wouldn't he have done that while she was on the bus that whole night before or whatever? You know what I mean? And that's what I bring up in the video. I, there is no testimony whatsoever that I could find that they had a fight, that they had harsh words or anything that night or that morning or the night before. There is nothing to indicate that Acock was seeing red here. So I don't, I don't understand that. Uh, now, Rudy was there, but why doesn't he say, yeah, I heard them screaming at each other at 6 a.m. or something, but there's not. There's nothing So I like have a that. theory. Okay. I have a theory. Okay. So, because I think I read somewhere that he was actually trying to um, reconcile with his wife, which is why he was all about letting her there. I don't think he was trying to kill her. I think he was trying to show off. Okay. I think he was trying to buzz her. You know what I mean? Like show off and buzz her. But, you know, Randy Rhodes and the makeup artist had been promised a nice flight. Right. 
And when ACOC was like, oh, hey, I'm going to go buzz the bus or whatever, I think that's where they got into the struggle over the controls because, honestly, I think it, it sounds to me like he was more hot dogging. I don't think he was trying to kill his wife. I think he was trying to hot dog. I think you're right. I think that yeah. um, that, that that very well could have been the other thing – testimony is, is uh, Randy fighting with Acock over the controls and it very that could fit your theory as well in that uh, Randy hey you're gonna kill us no I'm not and Randy knows the guy's high and so he's like you know trying to grab the controls and and maybe that's even what contributed to it that in the end had Randy just left him alone maybe he would have done a low pass and and they would have then right. circled and landed um, it could have been the struggling that um, the cause of trouble because the the plain attitude in that one picture is scary. The thing is over 60 degrees banked and six feet off the ground. It is crazy. Oh my. So, um, yeah, I haven't seen the pictures. I just read some of the description, yeah. but I haven't seen any of the pictures. I had to dive deep to even find this picture. I'm surprised it's not out there more, which makes me wonder is it really from the docket or not from the NTSB? Is it really, because I actually wrote the script for my stand up, in which I talk about the band member taking the pictures and how none of these pictures have ever been posted or, or made known. So was he really there taking pictures? I don't know. And then all of a sudden I find one. It's like, Oh crap. Yeah. You know, and the other thing is, did, did Randy take any pictures for his mom? And did any of those survive? Um, that would all be in the right. docket, um, but I can't find the docket. I would imagine it would not have survived just based on the description of the aftermath of the crash. They said that it was so bad. Yeah, they, they had, literally just burned up. Well, and they had to, they yeah, had they had to, to identify by dental records. Yeah. So undoubtedly that was. Exactly. Yeah. That was and back, jewelry. Yeah. That's probably. And yeah. that's back, that when, back before when the cameras, iCloud. Yeah, it was back when cameras <laughs> had film in it. So, yeah, most likely film didn't survive at all. And um, anyway, right. just horrible, horrible, horrible crash. And, you know, the, there's so many, so many links in this chain that just you just shake your well, head at. Okay, you have I questions. Just, I have a lot of questions. Yeah, I've got questions, but honestly, in talking it through, I've kind of answered some of these questions that I had. I know one question that our viewers are going to ask, they're, they're going to ask, what the heck, man? Like, number one, who gets into an airplane with a guy that's hopped up on cocaine? Let's look at that. First, well, and that I, goes I back to that culture, that, I think. Well, I don't even know that Randy knew he was hopped up on cocaine. I mean, Ozzy said, I oh, yeah, that, I saw the I asked dude that question cocaine. in this in the video. I asked that question. Did they? Did Randy know? Because others say they, they knew. Did they even know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. So there's that. But then kind of like you said, so we're talking about like somewhat successful, you know, rock stars at this point, right? Um they are, you know, typically when you're in that kind, they could, they're in a different world than you and I are. So yeah. You and I are like, hey, this dude's hopped up on cocaine. We probably shouldn't take an airplane that we're not familiar with and go joyriding. Well, but and they're, and they're these not guys so were called like, on the way to rock star. These guys were bona fide rock stars. These were arena band. Right, kind exactly. Of, yeah. Okay. So then they're, they're used to walking into a place and getting what they want. They probably didn't even, well, not only that, but they're in a different world than ACOC was. Like you and me as pilots, we know we can't just walk onto an airfield and take any airplane that we want. Oh, that one looks nice. Let's go. But like they, they trust, again, it goes to the, the trust, right? Like Patsy Klein and all of them had, they trusted their pilot. They trusted that he knew what he was doing. They probably had the same thing going on. Oh, it's, you know, this is an airplane on an airfield. Oh, yeah, we can take it. It's not a big deal. It's here. I mean, look, the key is right here. So why not? This is how us pilots do it. You know, they, they probably trusted ACOC in in his, like, knowledge or whatever, in his experience or expertise as a pilot. Oh, yeah, he's a pilot. I mean, I hate to I don't want to be like that, but people hold pilots to a higher regard, at least when it comes to aviation. All right, let's talk about ACOC and being a pilot. Let me tell you about that because you may not have had time to research okay. this. So ACOC did have his private. He also had his IFR. He was 1,500 hours, according to the NTSB uh, docket, that I, uh, a picture I found. And he, um, his medical had lapsed, so he didn't have a current medical. He had uh, the, only, mm. the only thing, the, as far as currency and recency, 
uh, he had not had a flight review in like many years. So he was out of currency oh for sure. He, um, the, the NTSB said in a for like, um, how many hours the last year, but it did put out of the last, oh my. out of the last 30 or 90 days at zero. So he hadn't flown in quite oh. some time. And here's what it gets. So really... he definitely wasn't current in taking passengers. Oh, absolutely not. And, <laughs> That's what you're saying. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, let alone the cocaine issue, let alone driving through the night, not having slept, let alone, I mean, just on and on and on. Here's, but it gets worse. So he did not run through his I'm safe checklist. <laughs> no, it gets so worse. Clear. Six years prior, oh, no. six years prior, he crashes a helicopter in the United Arab Emirates and kills somebody. Oh, <gasps> no. It gets so worse. So he was a helicopter pilot too? It, or? He, by the NTSB reports I have, he did not, his, his, he had a, um, he had his, uh, his ASCL. So his um, okay. airplane single engine right. land. He had his airplane multi engine land and he had his IFR. It did not show a rotor. So, but here's, here's where it gets even worse. And this is where, through all this study, I go from, I really liked Sharon from America's Got Talent. She was my favorite judge. She's so sweet. She's this and that, right? This is where it all changes for me. Sharon knew, okay. Sharon knew all this. Okay. She knew. But she didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. She knew that he'd killed somebody in a helicopter. She knew. Maybe she, she thought knew that, they, he was uh, that on the cocaine. other guys knew. She what well, and yeah, that's how we know she knew was because she yelled at the tour manager who went up in the first trip. Didn't you know he killed somebody six six years ago? You know. Okay, so then so she thought so she thought that they knew. It's not like she was withholding okay. that information. She's the she's the leader of this group. Okay. To me, I, I hold her responsible. She she was another link in the chain. She put all these links together. So to me, I'm like, holy cow, this is, oh my goodness. To me, Sharon bears yeah, a lot of I blame mean, here. And I'm not going to put this in the video, but holy cow. Uh, I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. Yeah, okay, she's like the leader, whatever, whatever. But again, you got to remember, they're in a different world than you and I are. You know, I, I mean, she maybe she said, hey, you guys should go. And they're like, ah, oh, we'll be fine. Or maybe, you know. I don't know. Like maybe she thought that they knew and thought like that's why but, she was it, like it doesn't matter if she knew she thought that they how knew. does she yeah, but how does she physic yeah, but how does she physically stop that? You okay, know what oh, I mean? Easily, she might easily, see that easily. and go that So so let me ask you this, Christy, what reasonable person who is in charge of a tour, who is managing the tour, because that's what she is the manager. She's managing tour, she's on the tour bus. She is day to day operations. She is the boss. She is ordering people. She's firing band members. She's hiring band members. In what, yes, they lived in another world, but in what world does this make sense that she hires a bus driver that she observes taking cocaine, that she knows killed somebody in a helicopter, and all? The, how did she even hire this guy to begin with? Yeah, but you... But you got to know, but here's the thing is I, like you said, it was part of their culture. It was an acceptance. Who lets their freaking lead singer eat a bat on stage? Like, <laughs> and uh, like, this is, this is their culture. That's what I'm saying is that, yeah, what you and I, in our world, we go, what same person does any of this, but in their world, it's all acceptable, right? The cocaine, the, this, the, that, you know, Hey, we got, yeah, she hired this guy, but she found this guy that was willing to drive throughout the night on a tour bus and like be part of their culture. I mean, I like if if I applied for that job and it was like, oh, you're going to have to drive through the night and you're going to have, you know, be OK with them throwing cocaine or whatever. I'd be like, I'm out, you know, so she may have known about it, but it may have just been one of those things you talked about previously where it was an acceptable part of their culture. OK, most of that I give you. Here's where here's where I break down from that. So here here you are. Okay. Imagine yourself, Sharon, and you're interviewing bus drivers, and you go, "Oh, it looks like here you had an incident six years ago in another country. Oh, where you were flying a helicopter and you killed somebody. Oh, okay. You know what? You're hired. 
you know. Yeah, and, but you know what? Though? What, what yeah, world but here's is that? The thing. I don't care. And even in their cocaine world, that's crazy. But here's the thing: what we don't know the like. I don't know the details of that incident. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't even know the person that was in that wound up dying from the incident. Like, it, he could have easily explained it. You know, and she's she could maybe even I mean, who knows? What if she was interviewing him? She was like, Hey, so what happened with this? He explains it, it's a perfectly rational explanation. Okay. You know, she's like, Okay, just stay away from helicopters. Easy, <laughs> you know, easy peasy. Cause helicopter you know what I mean? Like, yeah, helicopters are not the same as driving a tour bus. I don't think Sharon even thought for a million like I don't think she really thought in a million years that he was going to get his hands on an airplane and start taking band members for joyrides in a cracked out or, excuse me, like cocaine out, you know, state or whatever. I don't think she no, knew she that that was going to be no, even she a didn't. thing. She didn't know that was a thing. And they were asleep in the bus. And, you know, Ozzy went to bed stoned and drunk after talking with Randy and uh, so while they were still driving. So... Ozzy, right. Ozzy testifies that he woke up to a big bang with the bus, like huge, and really thought, oh, my gosh, we've crashed somewhere. And so he runs out of the bus thinking that they're on the side of the highway somewhere. He is totally lost and unsure of what's going right. on. I'm sure Sharon, to some degree, probably was similar. Um, but, you know, uh, I still I hear you and I know it was a different world. I still think that she shares a little bit of culpability here. Not, you know, yes, it's a Cox. It's his, it's, you know, his, it's his deal. I understand that. And, and, you know, he blew it. And he I mean, was, the only thing that, the only thing that I find her fault, like at fault for in any of this is the fact that she just hired this guy. But like, that's the same thing as saying, well, Patsy Klein hired, you know, Randy Hughes to fly her so she's got culpability for this. No, like, no, it's different. How are they going to know that this okay, was going to happen? It's significantly different because Patsy Klein didn't hire Randy Hughes knowing that he was, first of all, on drugs. Secondly, had actually killed somebody in another aircraft. So that that's totally different. And had ACOC... I mean... And also, Randy Hughes was current. He was following all the, the uh, processes in the and the Patsy Klein thing. He, this is a totally different situation. It's not, that's not apples to apples I mean, I, I, I don't disagree with you in that. But like I said, like, I, I, I'm having trouble. Like, if Sharon was awake when, when all this went down and he was like, yeah, I'm going to go for a joyride in this bonanza. I think I, I have to believe that Sharon would have put her foot down and been like, absolutely not. You know what happened six years ago. But she wasn't even awake to like say that. And that's probably why she got so angry and was like, I agree. What are you guys doing? Don't you know about this? Like, I agree you know, because again, flying a helicopter, flying helicopters and getting in an accident and like um, that unfortunate incident. It's completely separate, in my mind, anyway. It's completely separate from you're our tour bus driver. Yeah, you know? I, I agree. That's, I agree you, with that. How I agree with that. And I, I think that it, had she been awake and, you know, especially in between the first and second flight, she would have put a halt to that right away. Um, I do agree right. with all that. Um, I just I just am surprised she she had the players in place for this tragedy to take place. So that that's well, all. I mean, yeah, but like I said, I but yeah, I mean, there, so yeah, you can you can I guess find her at fault for putting those players in place. But again, I mean, the cocaine thing that was just part of the their rock whatever culture. That's what they did, you know. I mean, yeah, uh, and her future yeah, husband was kind of, was stoned and passed out. So yeah, she obviously that's right that's the world exactly. They were in. So when I made the joke that cocaine to them was just a stronger form of coffee. I 100% like I actually no, believe I that because I agree. in their brains. So for her to be like, oh yeah, this guy's like cocaine out, whatever. Like again, I he's that's just their out. culture. Yeah. That's their world, right? Yeah, he's a, he, you know, he's coffeeed out, right? You know, and the helicopter thing, it's like, yeah, okay, but again, helicopters and aviation is completely different than you know driving a tour bus. I don't think she realized that this would ever even be a possibility. Yeah. So I so find it hard to. Now, if she knew, if she was, here's the thing, I would agree with you 100%. If she was awake and she knew that he was going to go joyriding with the band members, 
and she didn't try to stop them at that point, yes, a hundred percent, I would put culpability on her. She wasn't even awake; like she didn't even know. Yeah, I, I think you know that, what I mean. I think that I'm still gonna, at the end of the day, I'm gonna still say a little bit of culpability is on her part, and and I'm probably gonna stick with that. I know it was the culture and everything else, but to me, she put the players in place for this tragedy to happen. And I think that um, a tiny bit of the blame needs to be put at her feet for that. The It's almost the same thing. I mean, as a tiny bit of the blame needed to be put on the feet of the tour company in the Buddy Holly situation. It's the same exact thing. Yeah. They put the, the pieces so, well, in place for that to happen. So um, through bad management, that I guess regard, that's what I'm saying. Bad management is a link in the chain. And Sharon, this was bad I management would, having ACOC drive the bus. I would say that the the owner and manager uh, Dwyer, the Dwyer, you know, um, yeah, he, uh, sure. owner of he. I would say that he definitely had culpability because he purposefully put people in the airplane and put the pilot in the airplane, knowing that that particular pilot did not have the experience or um, ratings to go up in the conditions that were presented. Yeah. That, yes, that's, that's different. He, he specifically said, oh, yeah, it's okay for you to go fly this airplane. I think that had Sharon seen what was going on, I think at that point she would have at least protested and said absolutely not. Now, whether they went with her, you know what I mean? Like with her permission or not, that's a completely different story. She wasn't even awake or even knew that they were in that position for her to be able to say anything until after the fact. All right. So, you know, that uh, that's where the difference is. Yeah. Well, and, and we'll have to agree to disagree on that. And, and rather than get circular on the discussion, what we'll do is um, go to, for you guys listening, what do you think is, uh, am I right or am I totally wrong and Christy's right on the culpability of Sharon Arden, future um, Osborne? And go to our uh, YouTube video on this and comment away because I'm not sure how you can comment on the podcast. I'm, I don't know enough about that yet. So um, anyway, I uh, pr- hope appreciate you guys uh, listening in. Christy, thanks for calling in. You're on the road and yeah, and uh, in the middle of flying a whole bunch Always. of legs for Envoy. And we yep. can say on sure am. So, all right, you guys, yeah. <laughs> yeah. thanks for listening. And uh, make sure you check out the video on YouTube.com. We appreciate you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to everything. And we'll see you guys later. I'm taking off. Podcast. <laughs>